Hello everyone in Panel Lemon Tarts, and today I will be building an internet cafe in our Lavender Lane town. I grew up going to internet cafes, and some of my childhood memories were of me playing online games with my cousins. I thought it was a great idea to share these happy memories with you. I can't wait to show you the final product. Let's start building. <laughs> Like always, we start off by removing the plants to make space for the construction of our new building. But this time, I kinda just put them to the side because I felt bad about all the other times I just deleted them and lost money. I've been slacking off with my pizza delivery as of late, so I thought I should try to calm down with all the spending. The pathway in front of the lot we are trying to build on it has this weird bend, and at first, I tried to accommodate it by forming the building around it, but it just looked so awkward overall. I restarted and did my best to still build around that awkward diagonal pathway. While I still wanted this building to have a balcony, I didn't want it to look exactly like its neighbor. To be fair, this one is a floor shorter than the last building we completed, which will allow it to have that nice skyline at the end. But just like the last building, this one will also have multiple businesses running. I think we can fit around two businesses. One of them will be our internet cafe. But to have access to these businesses, I needed to create a staircase. And just when I thought I was done with the layouts, I realized I added too much space in between the buildings. So while we aren't that far into the construction of this project yet, I deleted everything once again, just so I can move it a square over. This is actually a feature in the Sims build mode where you can move rooms as a whole. And I think we can agree that this is definitely something we also need in Bloxburg. So this is my new dilemma. I have two businesses I'm planning on having on this lot. There are three floors. How do I divide this equally? This is how I did it. I figured the bottom business can have an upstairs area and the third floor business can have a downstairs area, ultimately splitting the second floor into half. While doing this, I am keeping in mind of my ideas for these businesses if I will have enough space for both of them to function. I started getting into the windows and the doors and shaping the builds overall. While the buildings in real life do not really have too much shape, they are quite boxy, this is a big no-no in Bloxburg. With Bloxburg, everything is in the details. Here, I am reworking the pipes. I actually just copied this from its neighbor, but I really didn't like the look of it too much, so I used a pillar instead of a pipe. I don't know too much about electricity or plumbing, but in this build, the air conditioner is connected to these pipes. Hopefully that makes sense. Before we continue this video, our sponsor for today is Peppy Play. They came out with a new game recently called Peppy Hospital 2. If you've ever wanted to roleplay as a doctor, this is your chance. In this game, we work at a state-of-the-art hospital where we have patients that need tending to. Let's help this lady out. Hmm, we should run a blood test on her to check if she has the virus. She isn't looking too well. We're right. She does have the virus. Let's give her medicine. Perfect. She's all better. With this game, you can control the whole hospital. Every item is interactive. And we have access to so many other healthcare facilities like a vaccination room, a science lab, and not to mention, the emergency helicopter. And there's still so much to explore. You can now download this game for free using the link in the description below or pinned comment. You can also download using this QR code right here. Now let's get back into the video. I wanted the color of the building to be a color we haven't done before. This time, I used flint, a color I didn't even know existed in Bloxburg. Like, I knew the color existed, but I didn't know that that's what it was called. I hate having to work with uncharted territories. Hopefully, this will turn out nicely. For the upper floors, I used white plaster. I was so desperate for this build to have shape that I used modern wall planters to make it look a little bit more interesting. They don't really have a use. They're just there for purely decorative purposes. I added vines to this wall-trimmed wall and it turned out so nicely because the vines aren't so densely packed. Now I wish we had the option to decide the density of the wall vines. I didn't stray too far from the color theme that we have going on for the exteriors, so I incorporated that inside as well. After that's all done, we can finally start our cafe. Now let me be clear. I did say I grew up going to internet cafes, but I actually don't remember any cafes at the internet cafe. It was just really a place where gamers hanged out at the time because they didn't have their own devices or even have access to the internet. It was also a place where people would video chat their family members working overseas. 
I should have made it clear that this was back in the Philippines when I was a child. Not everyone had internet or devices or smartphones for that matter. Um, so internet cafes were a big thing back then. I actually don't know if they still are, but I would always end up playing those online dress up games, getting ready for balls and all that. But anyways, I digress. Where was I? There was no cafes in internet cafes. We couldn't get drinks or food back then, but for the sake of its name and for the sake of this video, I will be adding this cafe and darn it, I'm gonna make it look aesthetic as heck. This cafe specializes in drinks and desserts, so hot meals aren't too much of a thing at this establishment. But that was only because I really didn't want to make a space for a stove. We aren't very rich in space to be fair. I did have to close this cake storage thing because half of it is sticking out on the other side of the wall. If only we could resize it. I wasn't intending for this design to turn out so hipster-like, but I guess this is where this is going. This is another thing my internet cafes didn't have when I was a kid. Lounge chairs to just lounge about. Actually, our sitting areas were just rows and rows of computers with cheap plastic chairs. Lefner Lane is actually so lucky I am designing this place. They literally get to have this amazing cozy hangout. Because this is an internet cafe, no doubt we will be needing computers for people to use or rent, more like. But instead of getting rows and rows of computers like I was just talking about, Panda is very generous. I invented this magnificent round table with partition thingies that is supposed to hold four computers. I am actually so obsessed with this design. I have never seen anything like this before and I think it really makes the place look so unique. The partitions are there for privacy if you are doing essays or video chatting with family members, I guess. So other customers can't glance at your work. And this also goes for the employees too. If I could go back, I would give them more desk space because realistically, students, um, specifically college students who cannot afford their own internet plan or have limited internet plans, cough cough the college girl from last video, they would be doing all their research and studying here and would probably need a lot of space for those humongous college textbooks. Then again, as you can see, I am struggling to fit three of these computer tables in this space, so maybe we are better off with this original design. Though a little cramped, I was brave enough to add more sitting areas for customers. I never thought I would say anything like this, but the default color for these cheap computers are so nice. They go so well with this build. I really didn't want to spend too much money on the expensive computers, so I settled for these. But nonetheless, they look so aesthetic. I added bookshelves so I have an excuse to put more vines everywhere. And also so that the walls don't look too lonely. I also never had a reason to stack carpets like what I'm doing right now, but this build just calls for it. The under the stairs corner was looking so empty so I put a little sculpture there. Not really sure if you could call it that, but I stacked books and potted vines on top of crates. I hung jackets and coats on the coat rack for a little bit of realism as well. And I made sure to add an employee station on the side so the plates and the cutleries are a little bit more accessible for staff to hand out. I changed the flooring texture from tiles to wood and honestly, the best decision. I hope you guys haven't forgotten that we still have an upstairs area. This area is separated from the rest of the business space because it is the gaming hub. This is where the gamers come to enjoy each other's company. Well, more like enjoy their online friends companies, but I don't know what came over me. I bought these expensive computers and here I was thinking I was in my saving up era. So after splurging on that, I invested in two vending machines because the gamers are mostly teens who can't even afford to buy anything from the actual cafe downstairs. But I'm trying to be nice and give them a cheaper alternative in the form of a vending machine drinks. I added the seating from downstairs, shelves, and the carpets as well to make the whole business look more put together. Gaming rooms are a little bit darker, I think to remove the distractions so players can focus more on the games in front of them, so I colored the ceiling for that. And like a true gamer space, I added LED lights in red, of course. As a lavender lane business, they must have the iconic lavender plants right in front. And quickly adding finishing touches like adding posters, spilled coffee, used plastic cups in the bin area. And not to forget to hook up our building to the electric poles because we are an internet cafe and we need electricity to run. Anyways, we are finally done. Welcome to The Blur Internet Cafe. We are here to provide you with the fastest internet in the lane and satisfy your cravings and gaming needs. Let's start the tour. 
this is what our lavender lane looks like right now. I was thinking of adding another building on the other side of this road, but this is what it looks like overall. Isn't it so pretty? Let's go inside. I'm actually so proud of the exterior. I didn't think I was gonna make it with this one. I was like, oh, it's gonna look so bad, but it actually turned out fine. And I think it might be my favorite out of all of my Lavender Lane builds. I mean, look at this creation. Oh my gosh. I'm like fangirling over my own build because that's like computer desk thing is magical, bro. Magical. Also shout out to Kat and Clara for being my baristas for this episode of the Lavender Lane series. That's them right there and they are here to serve me my coffee. Yeah, that's right. And I really love their uniforms because it really fits the whole aesthetic of the place. I believe Kat was the one who made the uniforms and I'm just, oh gosh, everything's just so well put together. Even the decals. The thing I love most about this build is the fact that anyone from any walks of life can just come in and they would have a space for them, you know? Um, so college students, teenagers, children playing games, you know, the elderly, especially the elderly because some of them don't actually have devices at home. So they have to rely on these places to access the internet. And of course the teenagers, those who like to skip school and just hang around in this place, honestly, we're not gonna tell them off. They are bringing business over, you know? Um, yeah. Fun fact, I added these blinds not only because I wanted the room to be dark, but also because of the fact that if you open the blinds, it leads directly to the girl's apartment. Okay, that's kind of weird. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video and don't forget to watch out for the next episode.